This video will show the basics of installing an Eliasson Cooler Single Slide Motor Operated Door. It will also be helpful for freezer door applications. Please read and understand the installation instructions. This video is not intended to replace that manual, which includes important safety information. Always practice safe lifting techniques throughout the entire installation. Now let's get started. Installation will require the following tools. Pry bars, C-clamps, wrenches, hammer, electric drill, vice grips, drill bit set, hammer drill, level, rubber mallet, tape measure, utility knife, caulking gun, tin snips or scissors, optional shims, also depending upon the size of your door, lifting equipment may be required. Before starting, measure the opening width and height and confirm there is adequate clearance for the door to slide. Using a level, confirm that the opening is square and plumb. Verify that the floor is level in the opening as well as in the slide plane. Determine if the door is to be lagged to the wall or through bolted. In this case, we will be showing the door being through bolted. Carefully unpack the crate and lay the parts out on the floor. Enclosed will be the header assembly, face casings, mirror casings if ordered, and a hardware box which includes the installation instructions. Identify the leading edge casing. This will be the casing with the rubber gasket installed on it. Put a bead of caulk on the wall side of the face casings nearest to the door edge. This should be done on the casings around the perimeter of the opening, ensuring a seal between the casing and the wall. Place the leading edge casing against the wall at the edge of the opening on the closed side. The dowel pins should be facing upward. If applicable, you will also be simultaneously installing the mirror casing on the opposite side of the wall. Temporarily secure the casings using a large C-clamp. Use a level to make sure the casings are straight and plumb. This will aid in aligning the dowel pins which slip into the header later in the installation. Be sure the vertical casings are aligned with the highest point on the floor, using shims if necessary to move the lower casing up. The casings should be parallel when installed. Permanently attach the lead edge casing to the wall using the fasteners provided. Next, install the trailing edge casing along the trailing edge of the door opening, repeating the steps from the leading edge installation. It is now time to install the header and complete our vertical casing installation. Carefully set the header in place, lowering it onto the dowel pins found on the vertical casings. As with the vertical mirror casings, the header mirror casing should be aligned on the opposite side of the wall when applicable. At this point, it may be necessary to adjust the position of the trailing edge vertical casing slightly to align the pins. If adjustment is required, loosen the fasteners on the trailing edge casing and gently tap on the casing to align it with the pins on the header so that it drops in place. Don't forget to retighten the fasteners after adjusting them once this is complete. Check to confirm the header is level. When doing this, place the level on the top of the header casing and not the aluminum track as the track is sloped. There are two rows of fastener holes in the header one going through the track and the other just below it. Drill and install 3 8 inch fasteners in all of the holes. Tighten the fasteners using caution not to over tighten and distort the header or mirror casings. Confirm trailing edge casing is still plumb and install remaining fasteners. Once you've installed all of the fasteners, be sure and clean any debris left in the track from drilling the holes. The next step is to install the door on the track. Starting from either end of the rail, slide the rollers onto the track. Position the hangers at approximately the same distance apart as the studs on the door. Be sure the chain disconnect bracket is between the two rollers. Carefully stand the door upright at a slight angle towards the opening, making sure that the recessed pole handle is on the side of the door that will be facing the wall. 
Remove the nut and the top washer only from the studs, leaving the Belleville locking washer and bottom nut in place. Insert the studs into the brackets attached to the rollers and put the washer and nut back on. Adjust the top of the door panel so that there is approximately 1 16th inch gap between the inside edge of the panel and top wear rail. Snug the nuts on the studs. The next step is possibly the most critical when installing an Eliasson cooler sliding door. Unlike traditional cold storage doors with down and in motion, Eliasson uses a three point system. This system consists of two rollers and the floor guide allowing the door to seal properly and operate easily. Next we are going to install the floor guide. This should be done with the door in the closed position. Place a straight edge under the door so that it is against the edge of the opening. Push the door in towards the wall so it touches the wear rail. With the Eliasson cooler door, you do not force the door tightly against the casings. Slide the floor guide into the channel under the door so that it touches the straight edge. Mark the slotted holes so the anchors will be installed in the slots as far away from the wall as possible. This will allow you to properly adjust the door for adequate clearance. Drill the floor for wedge anchors at the spots previously marked. Install the anchors into the floor. Tighten the nuts. Following this procedure should give you the correct guidance between the door and the wall and allow for adjustments if necessary. The next step is to adjust the door so that it seals on all four sides. Loosen the nuts on the hanger brackets and adjust the door panel so that it seals properly to the leading and trailing edge casings. The door should be parallel to the seals from top to bottom and have the consistent pressure. You need to adjust one or both of the hangers to achieve this. The door should also be adjusted at this point so that there is adequate seal to the floor. If the door needs to be moved up or down, make sure that the adjustment is consistent from side to side, maintaining equal pressure against the vertical gaskets. Once all the adjustments have been made, make sure that all fasteners are secured tightly. When tightening the nuts on the roller brackets, Hold the brackets so that the roller is aligned properly in the track. The top of the trailing edge gasket should now be carefully trimmed so that it notches around the horizontal wear rail. Make the final adjustments to the gasket squares on the leading and trailing edge of the door panel. Both top corners have an adjustable square seal. Loosen the two screws and adjust the gasket so that it fits tightly against the wear rails. Remove the four fasteners at the top of the door. These will be used for installation of the disconnect assembly. Make sure the disconnect assembly is disengaged from the drive chain so you can align the disconnect bracket with the fastener holes. Once in correct position, Reinstall the fasteners and tighten them securely. Manually slide the door to re-engage the drive chain. Attach the release cable to the disconnect assembly by sliding it through the release lever and tighten screws. Test the release disconnect by manually opening the door. If it does not release, re-tension the release cable. Push the door back to the closed position to be sure that the disconnect latches back onto the bullet. Now it is time to tension the drive chain. Adjust the tension on the chain by tightening the adjustment nut until the spring is almost fully compressed. The space in between the spring coils should be about the thickness of a dime. Drill a hole for the incoming power source through the bottom of the control panel. Use caution when drilling this hole not to hit any of the electrical components inside the cabinet. Install the box connector and run the wire into the opening. Connect the wires to the proper terminals inside the box. All wiring must be done in accordance with applicable electric codes. Attach the wires from the door panel to the header junction box. Drill the hole for the pull cord enclosure and fasten to the wall. Connect the wires to the pull cord switch and reassemble the cord into the enclosure. 
Freezer pole cords have a heater to prevent condensation. These switches require that you attach the wires to the pole cord as well as the heater. Tie pole cord rope onto the eyelet. Be sure to adjust the length of the pole cord rope to desired height. Start with the door in the half open position and turn on the power at the main control panel. The door should begin to open. If it starts to close, then turn off the power and switch the polarity. The door has been set at the factory to open and close to 90% of the full travel. You will now need to make the final adjustments. Adjust the limit switches in small increments until the door travel is correct. Be sure the door opens to clear the opening and closes and seals properly. Cycle the door several times to confirm proper operation. Check the reversing edge operation. When the reversing edge is activated, the door should stop and reopen. Replace all covers. Cut off excess studs on the mirror casings and install caps. These caps help prevent thermal transfer and provide a cleaner look. Install these caps on the face casings and mirror casings when applicable. Remove any protective coatings on the door. Use a clean cloth to wipe away any grease or debris left from installation. We hope this video was helpful. For more information on Eliason's products, visit our website at www dot eliasoncorp dot com. <laughs>